Hello, uh, everyone. I am uh, Michal Kultny from SUSE, where I take care also of uh, C groups. And uh, today I prepared to talk about how kernel, how is kernel getting along with many C groups. Uh, not that because I think it uh, is a particular problem, but because I think there were some interesting issues uh, solved uh, along the way. So to uh, showcase to you what was done and uh, also because that may be only my perception that everything is just fine and uh, pink. So uh, I would like you also to bring up your ideas or uh, concerns that uh, you have about the scalability of uh, the C group fast, or not fast, C groups in general. Uh, so, uh, so where I'm coming from, the, some assumed use cases that come to my mind that I'm thinking about are systems where there are basically no C groups, but not by compilation, but uh, runtime. That means that there is only the, uh, there exists only the root C group, so that's somehow simplified case that uh, means it should not uh, slow down the system. Then there are cases when there is a single server, that means that there's one main workload and uh, kind of a simple hierarchy, for example, like the system D setups, so that this main workload uh, should not be, again, not much uh, slowed down or bothered by the existing hierarchy. The, yeah, perhaps the mo most uh, interesting case for this are container hosts where there can be lots of, uh, uh, lots of C groups and uh, uh, also uh, deep hierarchies and uh, yeah, the contention is high there. Then there are desktop use cases, uh, which yeah, they have some specific uh, specific cases and they can be also containerized. So uh, it's, it's not one particular stuff, but I think it should be separated here out. Then there are V1 setups, uh, referring to the V1 version of the C groups, where I think uh, that uh, I put it into parentheses for two reasons. First, because I think that uh, they either run into the same issues as the V2, uh, V2 sorry, uh, as a V2 setups, so, um, so so they don't need to be uh, considered separately, or I hope in the future there will be migration uh, away from that, so it's not so much pressing issue. And uh, then there might be some specific setups that don't even come to my mind, and. Uh, uh, yeah, so I would like to hear about that. Uh, there is something that I didn't cover here, uh, and uh, where the C groups uh, cannot be used effectively. And uh, from the point of view of the configuration space, so here uh, on the right side, uh, that's uh, just uh, the default x86 config that I have generated. Uh, so yeah, there, basically, almost everything is, or no, not everything. It's a uh, this is this case, how it's enabled or disabled. Uh, and I will also consider setups with memory controller enabled and kernel, uh, kernel memory control enabled. Uh, and because these are the actual differences that we, for example, apply in silly kernels. So it's, and that's the de deviation from the x86 default, which I don't know if, how many people use the default. Uh, never mind. Uh, so, uh, uh, from the internal point of view, what I considered like uh, how to classify the problems that can arise. So uh, yeah, first uh, things that comes to mind are the, is the locking, uh, which I was surprised here. Like I wrote down uh, C group mutex and uh, thread group uh, read write semaphore, uh, and I was surprised. Uh, as, uh, I saw at least two talks where people were referring to problems with these locks. Uh, because they are kind, they are global locks. Um, so uh, the C group mutex uh, basically ser uh, synchronizes modification of the C group hierarchy and migration of processes, uh, while uh, the thread group mutex is all, uh, not mutex, uh, thread group R semaphore uh, is uh, used uh, to, uh, to ensure stability of uh, thread groups when doing migrations of whole groups. Uh, so yeah, the, I will. Uh, talk about it later a bit more, uh, and uh, uh, some, there are some specific locks inside controllers, which I think should not be problem on their own, because usually they would be uh, nested uh, inside C group mutex, so they would not be a uh, point of the contention. Uh, so uh, w w when can we see actually the contention, but it's not only contention, it can be just latency that's unnecessarily long, so uh, the problems can arise from uh, operations that need to uh, traverse the whole hierarchy for a full tree or sub-tree of uh, C groups. So that uh, 
obvious, um, frequently happens uh, when we are collecting some uh, statistics. Uh, uh, when we have some ob offline objects, because the cleanup paths uh, in C group are not all, uh, are not synchronous, so uh, sometimes there can be large accumulation of the objects uh, that can affect the system. Uh, all the memory reclaim mechanism is also somehow affected by the number of C groups that exist on the system. I was also thinking whether there can be some use cases that where user space is uh, affected by large number of C groups that where they. Uh, have to iterate all C-groups, but I hope uh, first that there is no such use case that would be affected by that, and second, I'm not sure whether there can be an easy way how to solve this, solve this in kernel. I don't know if you're looking for interruptions. I have a bunch of use cases I can tell you about if you're interested. Okay. We, sure. uh, we sometimes launch super wide instances, so 384 cores, and we'll start, um, you know, 384 system Ds at the same time, and each of those system Ds makes their, their the whole own hierarchy. And you can stall the C group mutex for like on the order of minutes when you do that. And in fact, that will stall the host system D because if you make a dbus query to the host system D to ask about some service, the very first thing it does is try and do, make a C group, C group query. And so the whole system will basically stall. Um, so anyway, thank you for working on this, but like if you try and launch a ton of system Ds in parallel, and it actually gets worse if you launch system Ds, which then launch a JVM, because the JVM then also queries a bunch of this stuff. Newer JVMs like JVM 17 have C group awareness. And so you can really uh, make these locks hang even on recent kernels. Uh, so. Yes, okay, thanks. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, yeah, that's mm, yeah, my experience is, uh, you mentioned how many uh, hundreds, uh, because uh, I think like, uh, hundreds of containers or instances of system D that's perhaps currently the limit where people start seeing the issues. Yeah, yeah, we, we're there, um, for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, so, uh, yeah, so it's not uh, completely solved in, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, okay, so, I, good, good. Uh, another issues maybe that people can see is uh, based on the depth of the C group tree, but, uh, because yeah, the depth is not usually that large, but in some latency sensitive paths, when you have to, for example, do the char charging, do the proper charging for the controllers, so that it can be, uh, it can be visible, uh, the depth. And also then there is the, uh, also I think evergreen, evergreen topic, uh, the group scheduling, uh, which also is, uh, depends on the depth. Uh, and another aspect is uh, actually, uh, yeah, I was, now talking about the time, but it's also the footprint of the uh, of the, of the structures that are at, at, in, inside inside kernel, and also it causes fragmentation of uh, the data if we partition it into C groups. So that's uh, how I looked at it. Uh, thank you for the input there. Um, uh, so here are some ch uh, improvements from approximately past two years uh, that were done. So uh, yeah, so the C group mode access, I said. Now it should be used for the manipulation of the C, uh, of the C group hierarchy and uh, migrations. Uh, and in the past there were issues that also there were some procfs uh, files, uh, proc files that uh, took uh, C group mutex also for just readers, uh, which was uh, even worse. Uh, so over over the course of the history, uh, I think ho all of these readers were uh, converted to some way of the RCU. Um, so at least these readers should not stay in the way uh, for, of uh, CGF mutex. But as you said, if there is like, uh, I can imagine starting many containers in parallel. So there's, th those are the actual operations uh, that modify the global hierarchy. So uh, there is still a contention. Uh, for the thread group, uh, rewrite semaphore. So uh, that, uh, that basically um, this stands between uh, 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 between the migration and uh, forking and exiting path. Uh, and it's a trade-off, uh, or uh, what I want to say with this change, uh, that now there is the option uh, to basically uh, balance the uh, trade-off either towards uh, preferring the migrations or preferring the uh, fork and exit paths. So uh, usual, I would say the systems with system D, for example, where the usual case is that uh, you don't do fre frequent migrations, so you, th there's now currently the default uh, that the fork and exit path should be cheap, and the migration path uh, 
because of the implementation of this semaphore is then more expensive. But for example, for the Android use case where they rely more on migration and have perhaps some longer running processes, uh, so uh, they can switch, switch this uh, semaphore to, uh, pre uh, to make the migrations cheaper. Uh, and uh, another large chapter uh, is actually the collection of the statistics uh, which uh, 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 applies to any, uh, yeah, any statistics that the CU controllers can uh, collect, but uh, mainly it's the memory controller uh, where at one hand we want to have uh, it uh, be easily or quickly up, up, um, updatable from the writer side and uh, then get the information from uh, some pre precise information on the reader side. So uh, there were again uh, many changes uh, in recent uh, months or years. Uh, uh, yeah, one of them was, for example, uh, the uh, block control, uh, block I/O controller. Is uh, this has a scalability that basically there exists uh, uh, objects for each uh, C group and uh, each device. Uh, so. Uh, so if we have like uh, want to get collect statistics uh, from the subtree, so we have actually it's a number of C groups times number of devices. Uh, so it, it was quite expensive, but now there is optimization that we actually look only at devices uh, that uh, were somehow active in the recent period. So uh, uh, it is uh, just again faster. Uh, similarly, uh, memory controller uh, has. Uh, uh, has also uh, uses this RStat, and uh, uh, there was also still the trade-off between uh, how precise we get the statistics uh, versus uh, how fast we get them. Uh, because, for example, uh, the statistics are not always recalculated, but uh, they use uh, some um, older value that what that is calculated periodically in a synchronous context. But uh, for some places, it uh, could have uh, lead to, to to big error, uh, so uh, there were some changes that, uh, for example, uh, yeah, listed here. Uh, I'm not sure if I should go into that. Maybe if there is any RStat uh, user, uh, because currently I saw that there is still an ongoing discussion, uh, even with all these uh, changes that uh, were applied to RStat. So still there are issues. Uh, there are issues in this uh, collection of the statistics on machines with two, uh, with uh, many CPUs, where uh, yeah, when basically the col statistics collection is running, uh, uh, if each uh, if each CPU starts the collection, so then there is uh, uh, a thundering heard on this uh, uh, mm, on the lock that uh, protects or that synchronizes the collection, and uh, yeah, some people uh, actually notice this and uh, uh, consider it uh, wasted CPU time. So, and uh, yes, so, so the, uh, those, th there are some issues that are not uh, solved completely, I would say. I'm not sure if, uh, never mind, never mind. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, I don't know if there are other uh, complaints. Uh, Know how how is it this time now? Okay. So uh, yeah, I, I was looking at uh, some places that could be optimized, uh, or I noticed that, for example, the offline uh, memory C groups uh, are in some places still like being processed, even if they don't have to, because I think uh, the, uh, the goal should be that the offline memory C groups should only. Uh, uh, should only occupy memory, but uh, it should not slow down the rest of the system. Uh, so I looked at this and I realized that many of them are actually located in the V1 code. So uh, by switch, uh, separating V1 code of memory control and uh, V2, uh, so uh, we got rid of this uh, for free. Uh, and uh, so that's one, uh, one thing that uh, actually I think needn't to be done. Uh, because if pe if uh, people disable the V1 code, so it's uh, it's away. Uh, 
uh, okay, everyone is, uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I noticed, uh, yeah, that's a, uh, just a random, uh, random piece uh, the, uh, of code in uh, Damon. Uh, the monitor? Just a comment about mm -hmm. the uh, sure, go ahead. reclaim part of that. So um, uh, with MGLRU, uh, memory reclaim actually prefers to hit those offline memcgs hard and first and can repeat them so that they go away quicker. And with, with that, it, so it doesn't use the scan function that you pointed out. It's actually in the main VM scan code. Um, but the point is that, uh, yeah, there's, that, that helps the zombie problem quite a lot. So um, even though there are zombies, they disappear pretty quickly. Just wanted to point that out. So, uh, they, uh, yeah, I think it depends on the workload, how quickly they disappear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, so, so, okay, the comment is that uh, they don't stay around that long. Right, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, uh, I noticed that in Damon, the, the uh, there is a function that actually translates uh, the C group path uh, to C group ID and it actually is traversing uh, the C group tree, which I think is unnecessary. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not a, uh, I would say, I'm not sure whether it's a, like a hot path for everyone because it's monitoring tool after all. So perhaps not many people hit that yet. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, I, here is one uh, note that I think some of the problems can be so solved uh, by adding more second risk cats. So when people notice some issues, usually that uh, it, sometimes it can end up by looking at the code and uh, adding some uh, preemption points to that. Uh, I, okay, so yeah, and actually, uh, uh, I'm not sure, actually, uh, so it, time is approaching towards the end, right? Yeah, okay, uh, so uh, I think this is what I wanted to say, that uh, it's not a soft issue, but I think until there is some uh, problem, it's okay. All right, thank you.